the winners of the NBA draft. Congratulations to everybody who was drafted. Today was part two of the draft and now every team has made their picks. So let's dive into who I think the winners are of this year's draft and we're starting with the Minnesota Timberwolves. If you watch this page, you know I am a huge NBA fan. When it comes to college basketball, <laughs> I am not the biggest fan. So I don't know every player coming out of every draft, like that's not how it works. However, Rob Dillingham was one of the guys who I thought was being projected too low. I saw him at number 11, I believe, on some draft boards, maybe even lower, but I saw 11 for sure. And I thought, no way he does not get picked before that. And I thought if he did, whatever team got him was a steal. Well, guess what? At number eight, he was a steal for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Minnesota Timberwolves are a huge winner in this draft. Rob Dillingham, of course he's young. Of course he hasn't played the NBA yet. But first of all, he went to Kentucky. And <laughs> I know that doesn't necessarily mean anything necessarily, but we have to talk about the track record of how many guys come out of Kentucky and are very good in the NBA. Besides that, he was the SEC Sixth Man of the Year, and I just really like his game. I think he's gonna be great for Minnesota. I think he fits right in. And I honestly think he will see playing time right away. He's gonna get right on the floor. He will take some pressure off Anthony Edwards. I believe Mike Conley is obviously still gonna start at point guard, but I think that Rob Dillingham can come, Dillingham can come off the bench and Funny enough, he'll be playing with the NBA Sixth Man of the Year, Nas Reed, and I just think he could take some offensive pressure off of Anthony Edwards from a guard perspective. Because although Mike Conley, as good as he has been in his career, he is closer to, you know, retiring from the NBA than starting his career. He is getting up there in age, and at some point they're going to need somebody else, and Rob Dillingham could fit that bill. Number two, the Utah Jazz are huge winners in this draft. They got Cody Williams, who, by the way, is the brother of Jalen Williams on OKC, the one who had a huge breakout season. I mean, he was really good in his rookie year, too, but he got even better this season. But that's not why Utah drafted him so high. <laughs> it's not because he has a brother in the NBA. Cody Williams, I think, fits perfectly. Again, I'm not the biggest college fan, but I do think he fits perfectly alongside what they're doing in Utah along with everybody else they drafted. I think Isaiah Collier was a really good pickup as well. I hope I'm not mispronouncing anybody's name, by the way. <laughs> but I think he was a good pickup as well. The only pick that I was kind of like, huh, was when they picked up Filipowski. But you have to remember, he was on the draft board for a long time. He was supposed to be, you know, first round. And he just kept slipping in the draft. So this is kind of like Utah taking a chance in a way on a guy who was projected to be much higher. So basically... They stole him in the draft, so to speak. The reason I was only like, huh, is not because of his talent, but just because they have Walker Kessler, who right now is projected to be their big man in the future, and he's only been in the league two years, <laughs> and he's been very good. So that's why I was like, they're taking another center, but at the same time, again, remember, he slipped in the draft. So Utah was doing all the right things. I want to also say before I move on that the Lakers are a winner in this draft. Just because they got Bronny, and now they get to pair him with LeBron, and that was the dream come true. So, did they get the most talented player in the draft? That remains to be seen because we haven't seen Bronny play yet. So, I know a lot of people are not high on Bronny, and I'm not saying he's going to be the best player in this draft. Obviously, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, like, you know, in five years from now, we'll see what he becomes. It's just a win for the Lakers because it means that LeBron is probably staying, even though I already thought he was. <laughs> He's probably staying. They get to pair them together. So it's a win for them. So I want to talk about the Detroit Pistons because here's the thing. I think on most people's evaluation of the draft, when they did winners and losers, I think unfortunately the Pistons is on the losers tab again, which they're on almost every year now. <laughs> Let me say this. I think Ron Holland is getting so slept on. I think he's absolutely perfect for Detroit. I think he's going to do really good things there. I honestly could see him becoming one of the stars of their team. I'm not saying he's necessarily a franchise, you know, changer, you know, player like that. I don't know. Like, I can't say that for sure. But honestly, watch out for him. Like, I feel like because he went to Detroit, because of what's going on in Detroit and, you know, their history and stuff like that, 
He's kind of getting slept on. Detroit's getting put in the uh, loser category just because it's Detroit. I think Ron Holland might be in a good situation for him. Seriously, like, I really see him being a candidate for Rookie of the Year. I honestly, I see it. Beyond him, though, because I wanted to get that out of the way just to make it clear, I think he was a really good draft pick itself. I do agree that Detroit is a loser in this draft, though, not because of who they picked, because like I just said, I like I like their pick. But I feel like they're a loser in this draft because they just need so much at every position. Like we, I don't even know what player they can bring in to fix the issue, if that makes sense. Because they have so many young players who were either lottery picks or like they have Kate, of course. And Kate has been good when he played, but you know, he can't do it by himself. And then Jaden Ivey, everybody was super high on him coming out of that draft, I, me included. You know, we still have to see what happens with him. He's still young. And then they got James Wiseman, who, if you remember, was the number two overall pick by Golden State. And they also have Jalen Duran, who I love his game. Very, very good last year. They just have a lot of players where you see their names and you're like, those are talented players, but they can't put it together. And I'm not saying they should be contending for a championship or the playoffs necessarily with that young roster. That's not what I'm saying. But there is, like when you look at the Spurs, for example, the Spurs are just as young of a team as Detroit. And yes, they have Victor Wembanyama, who is, you know, potentially a generational talent. So it's a little bit unfair comparison. But the rest of the team, for example, if you went name by name, you would say Detroit has talented players like the Spurs outside of Victor Wembanyama. But their future looks so much brighter for some reason. And it's because it's not just about the players. It's about the coaching and how the organization is being run. And so, like, I do feel like Detroit ends up being a loser in this draft just because we still have a ton of question marks around what are they going to do to become a contender in the future to just look more, you know, put together? And I just want to talk about one more quick winner, by the way, even though we still have Ron Holland on the screen. The New York Knicks are playing chess right now, people. Detroit needs to take a page out of the New York Knicks book, honestly. They need to follow them because the New York Knicks were another team who... You know, it may be the New York Knicks and the brand name and everything like that, but everybody was laughing at them, fair or not, for like the longest time because they seemed to just not make the right moves year after year. They couldn't get it together. Well, now they're making all the right moves and they were a low-key winner in this draft. You know why? It's not because they picked the player, the one guy out of France. I don't really know much about him, so like I can't comment on whether he's going to be great or not. He's very young. But you know what the Knicks did? They stashed or they stocked up on more draft picks. They traded with the Wizards. I think they got an additional second round pick from that. You know what they did after that? They traded with OKC. I don't know if, I don't know why OKC did this. I guess the guy that they picked up, because I don't remember who it was, I'm so sorry, was someone they really, really wanted. Because the Knicks got five second round picks from OKC for this one draft pick. I'm gonna have to look it up after because I honestly can't remember who it was. But, so I apologize to him. Congratulations to him though. He's in the NBA, not me. <laughs> but the Knicks got five second round picks. They are stacking draft picks again, in my opinion, to make another trade. Now it's not gonna be like Mikhail Bridges, but I think it's gonna be Mitchell Robinson paired with a lot of those second round picks in order to get somebody else and or make room for Isaiah Hartenstein to resign. That's my opinion, but we'll see.